Welcome to my Interior Design Kids Club with me, Gwendolyn, professional interior designer. Today we're going to create a furniture layout for your doll's house box bedroom. So this is the big box that I'm going to be creating a design for in the next few days. So you'll see it's the same size. So you'll notice that there's a door and a window. So I hope you've created those already. I hope you've cut them out in yours. In this big box, you see that they're next to each other. But in the little box that I'm going to demonstrate with today, they're opposite each other. So it doesn't really matter where they are. And I've created two different designs to show you the differences. So the big box, that's how it's going to look. So you'll see I've got a door and a window. So I've put the door there and the window. And then I can work out where the rest of the furniture is going to go. When you're creating any room, you really need to be thinking about what type of furniture that you want to put in there. So that's what we did in the last lesson. Remember, you made a list of all the different types of furniture that you wanted to put in there. So in these bedrooms, I'm going to have a bed, bedside table, a wardrobe, maybe a shelving unit, and then we can put lots of accessories on it and it will be insta-worthy because we can change it around and create lots of different photographs. And then I'm going to have a bean bag and also maybe a rug there as well. And then the desk next to the window. Then we can sit at the desk and look out at something lovely. And then obviously we need a chair to go with the desk. So start off by listing the different types of furniture that you want to have in your bedroom. And then we can work out exactly where it's going to go. So the first thing I did was I found this and I'm going to make that into my bed for this big box. Um, I think it had some mushrooms in it. Oh, I do like mushrooms and the children don't, which means that I get more. <laughs> so that's a nice size in there for my bedroom. See, that will look lovely if it's a bed, won't it? Oh, we're gonna make that up. So then I took that size and I created my bed. And then I worked everything else around from that. So let me show you how I created that to begin with. <clears throat> and I'm going to show you using this, this smaller box. Now this might be the size of box that you have from the supermarket. <laughs> have we raided the supermarket? Well, this is just an Amazon box actually that came through the door. It's quite a nice size. So in this one, I got the window at one side and then I got the door at the other side. So first of all, we need to do what's called a working drawing, which is a bit like a sketch of how it's going to look. So my working drawing would look something like that. So I've got the door over here. I've got the window over here and I've got lots of measurements. So let's have a look how we actually get to that stage. So if you put your box to one side, what you need is a piece of paper, um, a pen, I'm going to use a, a felt tip because it's easier for you to see, um, maybe a ruler or a tape measure. Um, you're going to need a, a pair of scissors and something round so I use the inside of sellotape that's quite handy so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the shape of the box so this is a rectangle so this is a working drawing so it's not actually to the right size at the moment so I just draw, draw a rectangle which is basically similar shape and then my door is on this side and my door opens into the room where is it there 
opens into the room. So this is the door. And that's the way it opens. The other side over here, I've got my window. There we go. So now we're going to start to take some measurements. I'll do those in a different colour. <clears throat> it's easy for you to see. So we need the length first of all, and you can either use your ruler or you can use a tape measure, whichever's easiest. So that's 29 centimeters. Let me draw it like that. 29 centimeters. So from that side to that side, from that side to that side. Now we need to know from the front to the back. So from the front, from the front to the back. How big is that? That is, oh, that's 22 and a half centimeters. Twenty two and a half centimeters. We also need to put the height on here. So I put a H in the middle for height. We're not going to be using the height today, but we are going to use it um, later on because we're going to have a look at some computer packages and creating a bedroom on there, bedroom design on there. So the height we have, if I don't lean on it, 18 centimeters, 18 centimeters. So this is just getting all the measurements together to begin with. So the next thing we need to know is the window. Where is it on this wall? So I'm going to measure the gap here. I'm going to measure from the end to the beginning of the window and then measure the window itself. So the end is, oops, let's do it so it's easier to read. Eight and a half centimeters, that gap. And then the window itself is eight and a half centimeters. So add those measurements in, eight and a half and eight and a half. And then we need to know about the door. So where is that position? So we're going to measure from the front to the door and then measure the door width itself as well. So from the front, we have two centimeters and the door is doo -doo -doo, five and a half centimeters. Lots of halves today, five and a half centimeters. And then we also need to know how tall the door is. So we need the height. So we'll put a H in the middle of the door. Let's measure the height of the door. So that is about nine and a half centimeters. Oops, wait a minute. This ruler's got, this ruler has got a little extra spacey bit there. So I have to make sure that I actually start it at the beginning of the measurements. So that is nine and a half centimeters. Great. And then we need to know the height of the window. So we're going to measure from the bottom to the windowsill and then from the windowsill to the height of the window, that gap there. So the bottom, Make sure the ruler's the right way around is five, five and a half or six, six centimeters, six. And then the window itself is seven. So I'm going to put H 
which is seven. That's the height of the window. And then I'm going to use a funny little word, H2C, height to sill, height to windowsill. And what was that? Was that six, six and a half? Can you remember? Six, wasn't it? So six. So these are the measurements that I actually need. And this is a working drawing. So it's quite rough to begin with. And it just means that all your measurements are in one place. So let's have a look at this big box design. So you'll notice that this is 44 centimeters. So it's quite long, isn't it, this one? It's quite long, 44 centimeters. And then the width is 30 centimeters. So because the door and the window are on the same wall, we need to measure all of these little gaps in between. So let's have a look at that because this is a bit more complicated. So we need to measure from the end to the door and then we've got the door itself <laughs> and then we've got the little gap in between and then we've got the window and then we've got the end of the wall. So if we have a look at that, so we've got 25 centimetres here and then the door is 5 centimetres, the little gap in between three centimetres, the window, nine centimetres, and then the end of the wall is two centimetres. Now, because all of that adds up to 44 centimetres, then all of these measurements here should add up to 44 centimetres. So let's have a look. So we've got 25 and five is 30, 30 plus nine, 39 plus 2 is 41, 41 and 3 is 44. So all of those measurements add up to the length of the box and that just makes sure that we haven't missed anything. So if you get your box and two pieces of paper, so we're going to now make the final drawing which will look something like that when it's finished, but for this box instead of the, the big box. I'm just going to sellotape these together. Whoa. Oh, sellotape, sellotape. So we have all our working measurements and we're now going to put those onto a, another piece of paper. Now I put two pieces of paper together because then the box will fit on, won't it? So let's get started. One side is 29 centimetres and the other side is 22 and a half centimetres. So we need to begin by drawing that rectangle. I've got a nice big ruler, 29 centimetres. Let's draw that. And 22 and a half centimetres. 22 and a half centimetres. 29 centimetres. And 22 and a half centimetres. There we go. So that's the basic shape. And then we put the door in. So two centimetres from the end, and then the door is five and a half centimetres. So let's put some marks. Two centimetres, we'll put a dot, and then it's five and a half centimetres, and we'll put another dot. So that's where the door is going to be. So then I am actually going to do my door. So if you remember the door, opens like that. So this is going to be my door, which is five and a half centimetres. <clears throat> yeah. 
So have a look. See, that's where the door opens. And then to show the way that it opens, I'm going to use the inside of my sellotape and just put these two marks together and then draw, whoops, some dotted lines and it ends up like that. Yay! <laughs> now I'm going to do my window. So my window was eight and a half centimetres and then eight and a half centimetres. So let's have a look at that. Eight and a half centimetres here, dot there, eight and a half centimetres, dot there. So these two dots, that's going to be my window. Let's just draw that like this. Use our lovely straight ruler. <laughs> So this was our working drawing with all our measurements on and now we're actually starting to do this is called a plan so it says if you've chopped the top off the room and that's what you're going to see two-dimensional plan so the next thing we need to think about is the route that we're going to take so the pathway so we need to come in the door and then we need to open the window so I'm going to draw that in a red and I'm just going to put a path in. I'm going to do the door halfway and I'm going to do it the width of the door itself, like that. And then I'm going to do the window halfway. <coughs> and do it the same. And then I'm going to join the lines together. <clears throat> there we go. So that's our route from getting to the, from the door over to the window there. So we don't want any furniture in that space. The next thing I'm going to do is get the big piece of furniture and decide where that's going to be. So this is my room and I've decided that that is going to be a nice size bed in that room. Look at that. Ooh. Whereas in the bigger box, we need a bigger bed. If I put that bed in here, yeah, it would look quite nice if it was straight. <laughs> it would look quite nice, but I wouldn't be able to fit anything else in, would I? So I'm going to use bed this size. And then that gives me enough space to actually add other things into the room. So I've drawn around that bed and it's actually this size. There's the bed. Let me get the bed and show you. There we go. See, same size. There we go. I want to put the bed back in the house. Oh, I want to start building it. It's going to look lovely over the next few weeks when we start making all of these things. So then we get the bed and we decide where we want the bed to go. So the bed could go in this area over here. Now we've started to encroach into our space to close the window, but we've still got space at the end of the bed to close the window. So that's not a big problem. However, I want to start creating some wallpaper because I want a feature wall. And if the bed was over here and the desk was over there, then this would be the feature wall with wallpaper. And that would just look a little odd. So I think for me, the bed is going to come over here in this big space that we've got. Let's pop the bed in. I've got some blue tack. Just pop the bed in. And I've also got some bedside tables that I've made. 
and this is just to tell me the size that I need that's going to fit in. So this is how our furniture is starting to come together. We start off with the big pieces of furniture and then position them in the bedroom. So then when we make the furniture later on, we know that it's going to be the right size and it will fit in our doll's house bedroom. So the next thing I want is a desk. So in the last lesson, I asked you to make a list of all of the different types of furniture for your bedroom. So the different types of furniture I had for my bedroom was a bed, wardrobe, I put some shelves in, a bean bag, and I'm going to have a rug, a desk, and a chair. So in this big design, the desk is by the window, and I think I want the same here. So this is going to pretend to be my desk, <laughs> and I'm going to put that by the window. Although that's in this walk space, that's okay because it's quite a slim desk, so we can still reach over to actually get to the window. So I've just made this little shape to represent the desk at the moment. So let me close the door. Ooh, it's a bit stiff. <laughs> the bed is going to go over there and the desk is going to go over here. Oh, that's starting to look quite nice, isn't it? Because I'm using a lid for a chair for the moment. Oh, that would look nice, wouldn't it? So having the bed over there, look at that. Oh, that will be nice when it's finished. That's an Insta picture, isn't it? So we need to paint this, this side and then we can see the bedroom through there. And then also a lovely Insta picture here. If I get a nice, I don't know, a garden scene to go on that window. And then we'll have the desk and the chair and that will look really quite nice with the furniture layout. So we're already starting to think how it's going to look when we actually take our photographs. So, so far we have our bed and this is our sleeping area. And then this is our work area. So we're going to do our homework here or we're going to do maybe some crafting, some creating. So what else do we need? Well, we need a wardrobe. So this is the wardrobe. So the wardrobe could go over here or we could put it here by the window. I think we'll put it here by the window because then we've got some extra space here um, and we might use that for something else. Also, maybe uh, a shelving unit. So I've got the shelving unit. I'm going to put that next to the desk. then that will be insta worthy won't it we can have some shelves and we can create some accessories and put them on oops you know what we need a chair we need a chair so cut these shapes out whatever size you want whatever size actually fits your room so you see this one is quite different to that one with the layout so it depends what type of box you actually have as to the type of layout that you're actually going to create but you follow the same process start with the big pieces and then i've got my desk going in and then what am i going to put um, next to the desk where's my wardrobe going to be so because my wardrobe's there i need to make another walkway in front of it so that we can actually open up the wardrobe just draw that so i've drawn in another walkway there. So now we come to put the rug in. So we're going to have a rug and a bean bag on top of it and that's somewhere to sit and relax. So it could go down here next to the shelving unit but I think that's a bit cluttered. You know we've got this chair here so maybe in this big space over here I think that would be quite nice. And we need to make sure so that we have space around the bed to actually walk around. So I put this um, rug 
further down in the corner. So let's just put that space around to walk around the bed, shall we, as well? I'll just section that off. And there we go. So we come in, we've got space to walk around the bed. We can go to the window, go to the desk, and then we can get to the wardrobe. And then the other thing we need is a beanbag. <laughs> a beanbag on top of the rug. So that is the furniture layout for our little box here. And that's what we're going to create. We're going to create something for this and also something for the big box as well. So we'll show you the different sizes and what you actually need to do. So today I would like you to get your box and make sure you have a door and make sure you have a window. They can be either side or like my big box, they might be next to each other. Doesn't matter. Whatever you feel works for your box. Depends on the size of your box. And then we start to draw a plan. So start by drawing the shape and then put your door in, put your window in and then start by looking at your walkways so that's where you're not going to put furniture um, and then we have put the bed in choose your size of the bed and then start putting all the other pieces of furniture in and you will end up with a plan so this is exactly what we're going to create over the next few days so this is going to start becoming a beautiful bedroom design Oh, even just with those little bits in, I think it looks really nice. So if you have any problems, just get in touch and let me know. But in the meantime, start with your working drawing, put all your measurements on there and then create a plan that looks lovely. So have fun and I will see you next time on my interior design kids club. <laughs>